Okay, so this is going to be part five. So part four was the perception of all things and how to think twice. Uh, they deleted it off of YouTube. So it is on my Facebook right now. But uh, yeah, the whole thing got deleted because they didn't like what I said. Um, I will eventually have all this in one place. But for now, everything but part four is on there uh, on the original intentions gospel channel but we're going to eventually put all these on a website so that you know it can be easily um followed without being deleted um so um this is the part four that got deleted so what it looks like but so part five this is going to be a continuation but i want to backtrack a little bit um and i need to layer and so the riddles dark sentences and double bridles um uh, are all part of this and they're all kind of they're you know they're three different things it's all part of the the scribing technique and everything so this is going to be in the dark riddles playlist this is number five part five so i'm going to start with uh first corinthians 120 and i'm going to read it from here real quick because um i want you guys to see first this first part uh where first corinthians is and then see where it says signifying words that's the next section we're going to go over signifying words. And underneath that says dark, short, and little at the very bottom there. That's uh, we're going to wrap up. And then we're going to do like a part six versus the joy of a hypocrite and the hope of a hypocrite. You guys need to see what that is. You need to know what that is. And then in the middle of the page says the mystery of the slothful. That's going to be another video that's going to kind of break down and give you a great example of what is a signifying word of both and then how to solve a mystery right there where you'll think it's about one thing and then I'll unravel it and you'll see it's completely about something else. Um, a complete paradigm change of understanding uh, something that is a dark sentence that's been brought to light. You know, Basically it's two different perceptions, interpretations, uh, and this is the way the whole Bible's written. So that's going to be, a, by then you should be like, without a shadow of a doubt, know that there is um, double bridles, dark sentences, and riddles. And last one, oh, we'll come back to this guy here in a second. So last one, this right here is a grid. This will be like a, a part, uh, like a part seven or eight right here. Uh, this will be, if you see up there, upper left hand corner, we got... Uh, two different things there. You got meats for belly, belly for meats. Um, on one side, you got the same. The other side, you got both. Um, these are signifying words. I'm gonna break. That's a key code, basically. Um, underneath that is one through seven, a scale one through seven. That's another key code of how to write in double bridles. And, and then we got some d definitions like the word after. This and that crossroad in syllogism. This one's really cool. We've got to get to what syllogism is. Um, lawyers talk with this. Um, it is a sleight of mouth and is basically, like I said before, the psalmist terms, which is the term the same up there in upper left. Psalmist terms is written A plus B equals C, therefore C plus B equals A. And so you can make that as an art of separation to scatter and deceive and hide things or you can actually use it to preserve and hide and protect what you're trying to do through talking like this um so it's the dark used as both dark and light and syllogism is what it's called um we'll get into the definitions of dark sentence reels and double bridles but this is the last page this will be a chapter seven um this is something that you're gonna need to look up the, uh, this is the art of logic that we talked about from the Secret Arts and Dark Arts playlist. Um, the art of logic has a thing called the square of opposition. This is the seven gem in which you spin something in your mind. Well, I've been talking about this whole time. Like how to uh, uh, basically see something in, that's contradictory or contrary. And it's in opposition to uh, one to another where people have different beliefs. Like you got the blue and the red versus the red or Democrats versus Republicans. And you got different variations of where they agree and disagree and how you got, you know, how people can be scattered but be brought together. This is what the devil wants to do. He wants to scatter all of us, but he's got to use all of us and bring us all together. Uh, 
under his tyranny system, we got to somehow come together and lay down, make it all happen, but all be in disagreement. But you also got to be able to pull that apart and get people to agree and come together. Uh, kind of like at the very top there, the affirmative. Everybody's on the same page and they all agree, right? Uh, so we'll go over that too, but it's something to, um, to know about. So with that being said, we're going to begin. Uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? We did this in like a part three of this playlist. And the wise and the scribe and disputer is technically all the same thing. If you're a wise, you're a disputer. And if you're a disputer, you should be able to write out these things. And if you're a scribe, you should be able to know what how to, to dispute. Um, so a lawyer, they can argue, right? And they can be able to debate you or dispute. They can, you can discover a foundation by investigation. And you can, if you can, if you can speak it, you can preach it. If you can preach it, you can write it. If you write it, you can build it. So it's, so basically to train a wise master builder, you can actually start from scratch and train, train someone in all these things. Let's talk about the, the, the key stratagems how to be a scribe and that's over in this page of right here so uh and this is an example of what it looks like you know these these boxes you got four on the left and four on the right but there's these words that can kind of uh tether these concepts together and it makes this like flower of life tree of life pattern this is the way the bible's written that's why i took a picture of this so you guys can see that so um a wise man to be a wise master builder you know, you can be a scribe and learn how to write and write and code and all that stuff. And you can you can put that stuff on paper. You can think that way. If you can think that way, you can dispute that way. And you need to know how to dispute so you can basically anyone in a fallen state, you can uh, build them up and bring them along with you. And uh, you have to understand, you know, like a, a, a dialectic where you got people in one school of thought and you need to bring them to another school of thought and thesis antithesis and bring them to it uh basically to a common ground uh synthesis where they come together and they're you know the the dark has a way of doing that the wisdom of the world they have a they way of doing that and that's that's basically the way the, the wisdom of the world is um uh out of chaos comes order so you want to be able to understand what that is and what the world's trying to do so you can stop it because we have to do the exact same thing. We have to build our people up together and bring them all together. There's a lot of movements going on right now uh, in the country and uh, and some have been tried to be torn down. Um, uh, I, I can't say everything here because I really want to get this on YouTube and they're going to try to block it. So um, I'd be careful in what I say as usual. So... Um, we'll just go into the Bible study though. So um, we'll start with Proverbs 1. So it says, these Proverbs here says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive, to know is to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. You need to know what justice is, what equity is, what judgment is. And this is the number one thing is right here. To give subtlety to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. Subtlety here means prudence. This is what it's talking about in First Corinthians. We want to talk about the, the prudent. Uh, where, you know, uh, where is the prudent? Where is the wise? The, the prudent of the world is subtle and this comes from genesis 3 run 3 1 where it says that the serpent was more subtle than any creature so the subtlety or the prudence is let's see in verse 6 here to understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings there it is so dark sayings what are the dark sayings do we have to do with being proverbs you have to be able to interpret the dark saying and how they they are subtle. It's very subtle. So we're going to talk about that. So 
Um, so here it says Proverbs 1 through 6. The next one is Psalm 49.4. So Psalm 49.4. I'm going to go over there. Psalm 49.4. So. And I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit on from that page. Psalm 49.4. And then uh, you guys will see that these dark sentences are legit. So that's my whole point of this one. 49.4 says I will incline my ear to a parable here that see the little t there it means a proverb or a riddle so a parable is a proverb proverb is a parable I will incline my ear to a parable I will open my dark saying upon the harp see this is a musician Psalm 49 so if anyone says like this sounds like a cult this is the thing is dark sentences in the bible like here it is i will open my dark saying upon the harp see that i will incline my ear to a parable or a proverb and you incline by open open by incline it says my dark saying so my dark saying is a riddle okay so there's that one so if we go to that's, now we got to do Daniel 8.23. So Daniel 8.23. And we'll read that here. 8.23 says... Oh, we have to start down here. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king... A fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up or dark riddles so there's dark riddles what are those dark riddles do and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power see his power comes from not by his own power it comes from your power and he takes away your power by you not understanding dark sentences or kind of, let me give you a good example here of like these lawyers and these and, and these judges and these police officers, they'll trick you into confession and into uh, consent and agreement by you not understanding the words that you're saying. By your words, you're justified. By your words, you're condemned. And you give up your power, and that's what they want because when you give up your power, they get you into commerce. And when they get you into commerce, they can write you tickets get you into court when they get you into court they can try that gives them a chance to find you guilty and they can take money from you and put you into a jail prison that they make money off of you get a guilt built guilty plea which they make money off your uh sesta qv trust yeah that the trust that's in the public charitable trust that was written by your well made by your your basically your sure you're insured and bonded for um, because your birth certificate right they make money off of that stuff so and he shall destroy wonderfully how does he destroy wonderfully by you giving up your power and he has to trick you by using dark sentences he they spin things and that's that's his power his power is in those dark riddles and then through his policy and that's where we get the word police from their policies enforcers through the police and policies of riddles they tr use these guys these Freemasons, are, they swear an oath to their Freemasonry and all that stuff. And they cause craft to prosper in his hand. And his hand is his power. And what's his hand? The judges, the lawyers, the police officers, the bankers, the media, the politicians, right? And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. See, they're, they're, we're blue lives matter. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're for... We're about doing the right thing. Yeah, right. They're not, see, like I'm about back in the blue, guys. But what I'm not about is the the occult practices that we have to do reformation. We got to purge our departments and get these guys to go back to their oath that they swore to the Constitution, not the oath that they did privately to the Brotherhood. See what I'm saying? Okay, so there's that. That's 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 Daniel eight twenty three. Now we need nine twenty one and twenty two. Swiftly and skill. I'll show you that real quick. So swiftly and skill twenty one twenty two. 
Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening oblation. See, he has to be caused to fly. Gabriel is an angel. All angels need to be caused. How are they caused? Speaking in prayer. All right? So you got to be speaking and praying and confessing. That's how you get these in prayer. That's how you get these angels to work. That's how they're caused to fly. And when they're, sw they're swift for a reason. This word swift is everywhere in the Bible. But anyways, he touched me. And then he said, he informed me. If he touches you, he informs you. That's how they can land on you. And talk with me. When they talk with you, they touch you, they inform you, and they're by you causing, by your prayer and confessing. So you have to have certain knowledge to speak and confess or the revelation of Jesus Christ. you got to know the word. And when that you begin get educated into the revelation of Jesus Christ, these angels can begin to move swiftly because they, they travel up and down to and fro in the midst of stones of fire, which are thoughts. you got to get your thoughts lined up with the word. And then he'll talk with you. And he said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forward to give thee skill. That's what they want to give you. Skills or scales, which is which is how you get favor, right? And this is an understanding. So he's talking with you, informing you, touching you, give you understanding and skill. Uh, so skill. And then it says, at, in understanding, at the beginning of thy supplications, and the commandment came forth. So your supplications is the prayer, and I am come to show you. See, he comes forth to show by talking, inform, and touch you. And so they, they touch you by landing on you. They're, they're invisible beings. So and that's what they come to do. They come to give you skill, and actually that skill is to be swift. Where you can connect dots really quick. See, I got all these things connected together. It's the same patterns in the writings, everyone. And the writings should give you a geometrical patterns called a like a, a a dice you can cast that dice in your head and spin and unspin and that's what all this is for you see okay so now that's there i want to go to finish up with uh job 41 13 so you guys can see all this comes out of it started with job you need to know know that because um Job is the original book, it's the oldest book in the Bible. And then everything comes out of that. I've said this before over and over and over, but I want to layer, begin to repeat myself a little bit in some of these things so it begins to sink in a little bit more, just in case you're not watching the videos over and over again, but you need to. 41.13, so, beep. 41.13 says, this is about Leviathan, who can discover the face of, of his garment who can come to him with his double bridle well that's the devil the devil is a double bridle well so does God and we're going to go over that here in a minute so the the face what is the face of his garment the face of his garment his see it says his garment and his double bridle his garment is a double bridle so which his garment has a face. So if you think carnally, you're going to think like like what it says over here. When it says, the flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. So the flakes of his flesh is the folds of his flesh. You're going to think like what it says up here. His scales. This is what I mean by a double bridle. Can you what is his double bridle? Although it says scales here, as if it's talking about the flakes of his flesh, it's, it, it has more than one meaning. The flakes of his flesh is any person. We call someone like a snowflake, right? You got the the man, the world, and their man is of the world is, is of the flesh. So the flakes of his flesh are people that are carnal, they're snowflakes, they're broken people, and they always come together. And they're firm in themselves or they trust in themselves. You know what I mean? Like where the, that like it says in Luke 18, they trust themselves and they justify themselves. And they think they're strong. That when they're strong in themselves, they trust in themselves. And it means they don't trust in God. When they trust in themselves, they trust in that Babylonian system of commerce. That they're the flakes. 
or they're the pieces that make up the skin or the scales of the garments of the face of the of Leviathan. He draw out Leviathan with a hook. You have to find out who Leviathan is. So he has scales, but this scales a double bridle, and that's talking about the scales of, like it says in thirty seven. Let me talk about thirty seven sixteen, which are balances. Do you know the balancings of the clouds? The wondrous works of him that's perfect in knowledge. It's all about the knowledge. You need to know the knowledge of the dark, dark sentences, and the light. Can he understand the spreadings of the clouds? So there's the spreadings of clouds and noise of his tabernacle. Clouds, plural. Spreadings, plural. Is the dark side and the light side. And so when you understand that, you know that the balancings or the scales has to do with this cloud or presence. A presence that comes on people. Uh, demons and angels. Light and dark. It's all... You need to be, to be perfect in knowledge. you got to know how both work. Okay, so that's... 41, 13, let's go to, and then there's Job 11, 6. So 11, 6. And 11, 6 says that, and that he, God, would show you the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. See, the secrets of God, there's this double. Uh, it says, can you come to him with his double bridle? Well, God has a, a, a God's secrets or his revelation is double, and it has more than one meaning. Because you'll think that because it goes on, it says, know therefore that God exacts of thee less than. Because he's talking about exacting and less than what you your, what your iniquity deserves. You're thinking it has to do with measure, as concerning this right here. But that's how they hid it. This, that, that God that he would show you God would show you the secrets of wisdom that they are double to that which is how are their secrets double because there's a double bridle a double meaning and there's a way it says how can you come to the devil like Leviathan with his double bridle because this is the way the devil talks and God says in that same chapter he will not conceal his parts so there is a doctrine for thou hast said my doctrine is pure. I am clean in thine eyes. There's a doctrine that has a double bridle, and that is the secret. So that that's the secret, which is the subtlety. This is what that was majored on in the book of Proverbs. Okay? So, and then I also have uh, 4115. So that's... That was about the scales... Um, but I want you to see something. We'll go to, uh, 38.2 and 42.3 after this. So, but you see how it says, can you discover the face of his garment? So, can you discover his garment or his scales is his double bridle, which how he talks, how he writes, you know, that's how he talks in code and symbols and, and things like that. But there's also, what is the face of his garment? The face has to do with, um, there's an internal and an external. You can see the shadow of death on people when they got like the Westwood policies, what we talked about before, which is all the left-wing policies, the social justice warrior stuff. That's the face of his garment. That's the, the, the sun going away and the, and the dark coming. But there's also the face that's concerning the actual strategies and external operations of the devil which becomes his covering or his insurance. If it's sure, it is his coverage, it's his garment, like insurance. So he has his insurance policies. By his policies, called, he'll cause craft to prosper. He has a coverage, and he'll use his coverage that shorts you. He'll never cover you fully. It's all his covenants. So he says, will he make a covenant with thee? Yes, his covenant has to do with has he has companions which are the the flakes which is the merchants which is all his his system all the people in the babylonian system commerce and says i will not god says i will not conceal his parts nor his power nor his comely proportion so god's going to show you like who the devil is he's going to show you all those parts which has to do with his face and the double bridle Okay, if you go to 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2, 38.2,
It says, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? How do you darken counsel? By words. Without knowledge. What is a word without knowledge? It's a word that you leave out with some interpretation or understanding with it. It's like saying, no, no, those scales are just talking about, there's no double meaning to that word. It's just, his scales are talking about the flakes of his flesh. So they're using words now and they're without knowledge. They're, if it's words with knowledge, they're going to say, well, there's a way to see this more than one angle. Who is this that darkens counsel by words? You can darken counsel, which is the counsel should be to have the knowledge of how words can be twisted and words can be given double meanings and words can be uh, uh, structured in a way that creates a what we call later, I'll show you, is a fork. I want you to see that real quick. Uh, a fork, which is... Kind of like here, there's multiple, there's there's crossroads and forks here, which this is a, a fork in the road or a train of thought. This up here on the right side there in the middle of the page. See where that Y is? This is a fork in the road or train of thought, which allows another angle. Okay, so, the, so there's, there is a double bridle, which is number three there. It says, a sentence structure with a hidden fork to allow more than one interpretation. So there's there's a way to write a sentence where it can go in more than one direction. So um, I'll give examples of those in the future, but just know that um, that's a certain type of knowledge. That we're going to go over that about about part seven or so. So that's if you leave knowledge out of your counsel, you're not going to let people know that there's forks in the road, that there's a train of thought that, you know, there's something outside of a train of thought where you can disconnect the tracks and railroad someone. When you railroad someone, you pace and lead them down a path because you're setting them up to give little consents to put them in a trap so you can get money out of them. That's what lawyers do. That's where they say, objection, your honor, leading the witness, because you're tr they're trying to railroad them. They're trying to trick them into confession but not, not because they're guilty of anything, but because they're trying to make them guilty so they can get money. You see what I'm saying? They're condemning the guiltless. So that's a tr that's, that you need to know how this stuff works, guys. So, so who is this that darkens counsel? The whole book is a book that teaches you how to darken counsel by what? Words without knowledge. So you got to have words with knowledge to bring counsel to light. Okay, so I'm going to show you another one. It's in, uh, there's another angle to this. So it says, Who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? So you use knowledge also to hide counsel. Okay, so that would be like, like how do you use knowledge to hide counsel? Well, that's why I just said in chapter 11. In chapter 11, I said that... You add, well, that's 14. You add, like, knowledge right here. Know, therefore, that God exacts of thee less than what your iniquity deserves. So, see, God exacts and it's less than, so that means this double has to do with this measurement right here. So, you just use knowledge. You added this uh, second sentence, and it's knowledge to hide this counsel, which is a secret. It's secret counsel that begins to talk in code. It's a double bridle. That's what I said, which is a secret, which is a doctrine. My doctrine. See this where it says my doctrine? So there is doctrines in here uh, that teaches you these secrets. It's all in here. And this is how the writers would write it. People, are, we, what we do is we learn in church that like, um, we, we, we learn that like, oh, the prophets were anointed by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, like, it was just these special talented people that had God's Spirit on them. And they wrote the Bible. And, and so it's like a mystery. And no one can understand this stuff. Like, uh, or, or we can't write anymore like this. It's only the prophets. And that was back in the day of Old Testament. 
That's not true. Like you can learn everything and every pattern that the the um, prophets wrote, and you can write that way too. And God wants us to know it's a doctrine. Like it says in so uh, not Psalms, but First Corinthians, it says, "How come every one of you hath a psalm, hath a hymn, hath hath a revelation, hath a doctrine?" This is a doctrine, and that's why I just showed you on that um, paper right here. These are doctrines. These are keys of these doctrines. What you need to know what a fork and road is, what a train of thought is, what does it mean to uh, put something in the meanwhile. You know, that's like something else is going on while you have a train of thought. Okay, so we'll go to now. Uh, we did, let's go 3719, Job 3719, and this is another about dark, so 3719 says, teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech, why? By reason of darkness. Darkness makes it to where you cannot order your speech, or it'll be out of order. So if you can't, not only can, can is, is it out of order, like, and this whole book is out of order, and it's meant to be put back in order, everything's out of order, because you don't know who does what. That's the way this book was written, so it would confuse you, so you think God and the devil, God, God's doing what the devil's doing, and the devil's doing what God's doing, and you won't know whose hand is whose, and you won't never know well, where something's coming, where it's going from, you know, it's all twisted up. So the devil's a liar. And so you need to be taught how that, how lies work. And so teach us what we shall say unto him. So not only do you have to teach us what we shall say unto to God, but you, you need to be taught order. It says, for we cannot order our speech. You have to put all these speeches that they're, the, the, our speeches uh, this is also a key hint to how this whole book works. For we cannot order our speech. Everyone has a speech. So we have the Lord talking here. And then you have Elihu speaking here. He started in chapter 30. But you got to go. See, so it says, hear my speeches. Wherefore, Job, I pray to hear my speeches. So that's Elihu. He's got his speech. Everyone had their speeches. There's your speeches. So you got to begin to put the speeches in order. Okay, and I know this is going to be another one we're going to talk about. It says, for God speaks once, yea, twice. How does God speak twice? Well, he speaks over and over again. He'll say once, but no no one's listened to him. See, man doesn't perceive it. See, he'll even come to you in a dream, in a vision. And then he opens your ears and, the, and, and, and then seals your instruction. Was So that that's how it, that's knowledge. This is more knowledge. To hide the counsel. What's the counsel? Counsel is there's more than one perspective. It's not over and over again. It's God speaks one way and then another way. He has more than one interpretation. So he does that so he can withdraw man from his purpose. Why would he withdraw man from his purpose? Uh, I don't know. Maybe because man's purpose is building a pyramid and he was tricked into agreeing and consenting to building a, a, a Babylonian monopoly and the guy was tricked and now he wants to get out of it and God's speaking another way that gives you revelation to bring his kingdom which is God's purpose God's purpose it should be your purpose and that's this twice it's all hidden in the twice which is all this purple ink right here is what I'm saying so does that make sense so that was that actually was thirty three uh, fourteen. God speaks once ye twice. We just read thirty seven nineteen. So um, if you notice here on the where it says neuro pattern, the neuro patterns what I just said is all the ink and blue. So that's that's where we just edit here. I'm going to do a little bit of writing. So the neuro pattern is a constellation. That's like where how I'm doing it here. Like you circle something and come over here. It makes like a constellation. And it's like you'll see why is master builder, master of assemblies. These are two, one and the same thing. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but that's, that's, that's a neuro pattern, constellation. It looks like a constellation, you know, like the stars uh, up in the sky. And there's a, not just a neuro pattern. Uh, here, underneath this is linguistics. 
which is the art of grammar, it's the structure of sentences. There's the neuro pattern linguistics, uh, which is NLP, uh, neuro linguistics pattern. There's patterns in which uh, people talk, and that's and that's all in sales psychology and things like that. And a lot of sales psychology is the wisdom of the world because it has to do with commerce and making sales and traps so you can get people underneath you and things like that. That's the wisdom of the world to keep the Babylonian system of commerce going. Okay, so I just wanted to show you all those words where it says, God speaks once, yea, twice. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Uh, who is this that hides, no, who's this that hides uh, knowledge? And is it hide knowledge? Is it hide knowledge? Hold on a second. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? You, The devil wants to hide counsel. He doesn't want you to have counsel. He wants you to be ignorant, so he has to hide it. And that's the art of separation, right? And then there's a difference between hiding counsel and darkening counsel. To darken counsel is something a little different. Hide counsel is where you don't even get it. Like, it's not even out there. Like, a lot of stuff about the flat earth and everything didn't come out until 2017. I heard it in school and stuff. And it used to be taught. They said the church used to believe in everything. Then they said we got educated with the telescope and science and all that stuff. And the science so falsely called, right? But uh, that was all hidden, and we didn't even know. It was, uh, and there was another infrastructure out there. Out there. So that's it's not. It was kind of hidden that it was darkened. But there's a darkened council, and they do that by words without knowledge. So there's a knowledge that hides words you can also have things completely out of people's sight not even in in textbooks right not even in school systems but there's a way to darken counsel hide counsel by words with and words without knowledge and that's why i just showed you the pattern by adding to the word taking from the word having double bridles having forks and road and we'll keep going over more and more examples of those in the bible of what all those look like so I'm going to end this one here. Uh, this was part five, and we're going to go into signifying words that begin to let you know what dark sentence is about to be written, what pattern is about to be shown, so where you, have, you can discover God speaks twice.